Welcome to the Lessons for Living television program. My name is Bill Santos. Thank you so much for watching. You know, when we're on this part of our set, it means we have a special guest. And we have the privilege today of having with us Dr. David Sloan, who I've claimed as our resident health expert. Dr. Sloan, welcome back to the Lessons for Living television program. It's uh, great to be here again, Bill. Well, it's great yeah. to have you. And uh, for the benefit of those that might be tuning in for the very first time. Uh, you are a doctor of natural medicine. That's correct. And you've been in practice almost 40 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, you always provide us with some very practical, uh, interesting information to help us live better lives. And so let's start like we normally do with a quick you know, bio on yourself. And then we wanna move into our topic, which I think is a really important one, which is our immune system. Yes, so uh, I've been, uh, as you said, uh, 40 years in full-time natural medicine practice. Uh, currently, I'm clinic director at Sloan Natural Health Center in Whitby. Excellent. Ontario. Now, uh, what is the website? The website? SloanNaturalHealthCenter.com. So any of the viewers that are interested in getting in contact with Dr. Sloan, they can do it through the website? That's correct. Yeah. And we have a link on our website under the uh, previous programs tab, which uh, is also, mm -hmm. will direct them to your website. You know, we had some discussion about uh, topics, you know, and what we'd be talking about, and uh, you um, suggested we talk about our immune system. Why, why, mm -hmm. why did you pick that topic for this discussion? Yeah, I feel that's very current. I feel that, um, you know, uh, health, and or the lack of it uh, has been weaponized to a point to um, induce or put fear in a lot of people. You know, illness we've had since the year 2000, we've had lots of different viruses, uh, you know, claimed uh, and pandemics and things like this. And I just really feel that I want to give a different perspective on things when it comes to the immune system because the immune system is our defense system. Right. It's really uh, the part of our, our makeup that protects us against illness. And so a better understanding of the immune system I feel is very, very important to all of us to be healthier and to be free from disease. There's been a significant amount of research, hasn't over the last 25 years with regards to our immune system, how it works. Mm -hmm. uh, in your assessment, how much, if any of that research has made its way, the findings have made their way into conventional you know, medicine? Well, as anyone in, in the health field will know, uh, moving from the science and the discoveries of things into the daily practice in conventional medicine uh, tends to take years, if not decades. And so I would say that no, very little of the research that has been known over the last 20, 25 years in general is not being mm -hmm. applied, is not being applied. Um. So I've written here some questions, so I can sound like an expert. <laughs> so, um, modern medicine generally prefers to focus on the microbe or germ theory. Yes. As its basic thrust in treating much of our disease today. Yes. How, in your assessment, is that an outdated or even a, maybe even a limited view of... It's definitely, it? yes, it's definitely outdated and it's definitely limited. And uh, Why? so maybe we'll start by just breaking down what the immune system is. Okay. We've got two major 
parts that make up the immune system. We have the innate or generalized immune system and we have the adaptive or specialized immune system. And where we're really lagging behind in conventional medicine, in my opinion, is in adaptive response, the adaptive immunity that uh, our, our body responds to when we're uh, in... Sort of under uh, attack? Or? Under attack, when yeah. we're exposed. Um, but let's go back to the innate, hum uh, sorry, the, the innate form of our immune system. So the innate form is basically, you know, we've got, um, uh, we've got different anatomical barriers. We have tight uh, junctions in our skin and in our intestinal walls. We have mucous membranes. We have mucus itself. Um, inflammation is an immune response. Okay. Um, we have neutrophils, we have uh, phagocytes, we have macrophages, we have monocytes, we have natural killer cells. These are all part of the innate immune system. And that has been accepted and much of it has been, you know, adopted. Okay. Now, when we get to the other side, to the adaptive immune system, this is basically uh, made up of uh, lymphocytes. So we have B lymphocytes, which produce antibodies, and we have T lymphocytes, which produce cell-mediated immunity. Okay. This is important uh, from the standpoint that, uh, and I'll get into this in a minute, but I'll just, uh, just bear with me. Yeah, yeah, no it, it, Modern medicine focusing on the germ theory. So when we have, um, uh, let's say artificial immunity, which is um, given by such things as vaccinations okay. and so on, um, that typically ignores that whole other side of our immunity, the adaptive side. Mm. The B lymphocytes that create natural antibodies, natural immunity, um, cell mediated immunity conferred by T lymphocytes. Okay. This is where the body itself Okay. actually, you know, pivots. It, it, right. it, it, it actually, okay, it, it, it gets exposure to something and it starts to develop its own adaptation okay. to what it's okay. I I experiencing. We might even add on to that um, with, the, uh, with the studies that have been done on the microbiome. The microbiome project, which started around 2000, discovered trillions of organisms in our gut, in the intestinal tract, which actually has been credited for making up roughly 80% of our immune system. Wow. So we have all of this that we, uh, our, our bodies naturally um, come to the fore, like as, as right. like an army of okay. protection and defense that, um, you've heard maybe of this concept of herd immunity. Yes. So when we're exposed to, you know, so-called pathogens, our body adapts to it and adjusts to it and, and starts to create its own antibodies and its cell-mediated responses to these things in order that we can develop a, um, a response to it. Okay. And a healthy response to right. it. Right. This is how God made us. Right, okay. And it's being ignored. Right. So by these external, I mean, I don't know what the term is, but vaccines or these external, in essence, our, are you saying so our body would have the capacity to in fact deal with these intruders if properly? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. Okay. That's, that's what I'm saying. That's what I thought I heard That's you say. That's what I'm saying. Okay. And, and so it's very difficult to really get your head around this because we have been conditioned to believe in the germ theory only. So let's just go back to that. So there's the germ theory or the microbe theory or if you want to say the virus theory. Okay. They're all kind of like, you know, interrelated. Versus the terrain theory. So let me try and give you an example. Sure. So let's say we've got a fishbowl. Okay. And we've got the fishbowl with the fish in it and really dirty water. Okay. 
So the germ theory is basically going to say, we want to isolate that fish and we want to vaccinate it. Okay. The terrain theory is, is saying, no, we clean the water. Okay. So basically, um, the germ theory uh, supposes or presupposes that there is an organism, a pathogen, that is an invisible enemy that is going to attack us and we need to develop some sort of medicine, vaccination, treatment, whatever, to protect ourselves right. from this invisible enemy. The terrain theory, on the other hand, looks at, okay, so what is it that God gave us right. to protect us from these things? Could it be our immune system? Right. Yes, of course, it's our immune system, it's our defense system. And our defense system is perfectly capable to deal with anything because in my view, God never created anything that was really bad. Right. Why, why I mean, we live with thousands, millions, trillions of organisms, which at times are considered to be friendly mm -hmm. and at other times may not okay. be friendly. Right. And so our immune system has to develop a protection against that and keep a balance between the unfriendly and the, the friendly uh, in our bodies. We, we, you know, we, we use the term catching a cold or catching a flu. Do we catch a cold? Like what is that like? So again, it's all in semantics. We're, we're, we're used to, okay, so we're gonna catch a cold because so-and-so has a cold or so-and-so has a flu or whatever. Um, why is it though, Bill, is if you have 10 people and one person has a flu or a cold and maybe two or three others get a flu or a cold but then the other five or six don't, mm. why is that? Right. So my feeling is is that we have to take the germ theory and we have to take terrain theory and we need to get an understanding of both of those and put those in balance because to totally focus on the germ theory has so many holes that just you can shoot holes through it it right. just doesn't it just doesn't hold water completely and so with the terrain theory is that if you build up and maintain a healthy immune system, you're not gonna get that cold, you're not gonna get that flu, you're not gonna, so yeah. where is the, the focus? The fo you know, right, I, exactly. I typically say, if you get a cold or a flu, it's your body's response to needing to cleanse itself, if you like. Um, why is it that people get so more sick? You know, we say flu season starts, in the fall, September 1st or after a Labor Day. Right. And why is that? Because it's getting colder. People are inside more. They're not out, they're not as active. They're breathing indoor air. They're not getting the fresh outdoor air. And, and, and so your, your, your body, your cells, kind of get more clogged up. Hmm. And you're more susceptible to getting sick. And a lot of times they say, well, we haven't found a cure for the common cold because there, it's the same old thing, the germ theory. It's not out there, it's in here. Right. It's inside. You got yourself sick because you aren't healthy, you aren't being right. active, you're not, all the things that make up, and I'll get into that more detail soon, um, that make you healthy, that keep your immune system strong and vibrant. So you're gonna be one of those five or six out of 10 that don't get the cold or don't get the flu. I've proven this to myself and in my family and in my patients over and over and over and over again. Yeah, so that, that is, so that makes it clear to me, the focus. Are we gonna focus on always chasing a remedy externally, right, with all these variations of yeah. viruses and stuff that come around, or are we gonna focus on creating a healthy environment within our bodies that when under attack, our body can adapt yes. to in fact uh, resolve it? So what would be, you know, for someone listening, well, okay, so okay, so what are some of those steps then involved in beginning to establish that kind of uh, okay? So I, I that I healthy immune say, system yeah. to be able to resist, like to adapt to the. I typically, uh, you know, put forward four columns of health. Okay. So let's start with number one. Number one, diet. Okay. So if you're filling yourself with lots of sugar, sugar's a bad one, sugar basically disarms 
uh, white blood cells, which is a major part of our, our, our immune system. Um, in fact, if you have something with sugar, it can paralyze, paralyze mm. your immune system for upwards of eight hours. Wow. So you are walking, uh, a walking actually disaster. You're susceptible to... You just, you know, to all, wow. to all, you know. So uh, sugar and, you know, junk food and all these things. And we want to focus on, you know, lots of good quality foods, good quality proteins. Um, we want to look at, um, you know, things like your uh, healthy vegetables, your cleansing type vegetables. You've got uh, broccoli and cauliflower and, um, you know, we've got lettuce, any, any green vegetable, really, green, yellow, orange. Um, fiber uh, with fruit um, and whole grains and things like that. Um, we, we basically want to focus on foods that are clean. We want to also make sure we drink lots of water. Okay. Um, and I would include that in, in, in this first column. Second column is activity. Okay. So making sure that you have good physical activity, whether it's a, a, an exercise sort of program that you do, or whether you're just active, you're moving around, you're busy, you know, you might be doing things in the house or uh, doing things outside the house or, or like gardening. So how does the activity, you know, connect to the immune system? I mean, so, I can understand how that's important to a healthy lifestyle, but how do, specifically does it... Yeah, that's a good system. question. So a activity basically moves the blood through, and the okay. blood carries oxygen, and it helps to keep the cells healthy. Got it. We also uh, want to be outside as much as we can and breathe in the fresh air, getting more oxygen. We're oxygenating our blood, basically, and the more oxygen that we get into our bloodstream, the healthier that we can be. That oxygen will kill viruses, bacteria, other pathogens on contact. Um, basically, if you feel like you're coming down with a cold, if you feel like that's happening, the first thing you should be doing is getting outside, going for a walk, and doing deep breathing. Hmm. Just breathe in all the oxygen that you can. And uh, typically in, in uh, my new book, uh, transform your health, life. Uh, sorry, transform your health. Transform your life. Uh, I talk about uh, breathing in on seven. So breathe in. So you're walking, and you're counting. Breathe in to the count of four. Then hold for three more steps, and then exhale for the next seven. Oh. Okay. And then breathe in four. Hold for three. Exhale. Do that at least twenty times. You're going to have a a major uh, positive effect on destroying any microorganisms that are in your system that hmm. could lead to uh, more infections. It's just simply breathing in just simply doing health air, uh, healthy air. Fresh yeah. air. Wow. So that would be the second pillar. Okay. The third pillar or col column would be uh, sleep. Hmm. And if you aren't getting seven to eight hours of sleep a night, then your immune system can plummet. Okay. And, you know, the quality sleep uh, that you need is regenerative. It helps to regenerate your immune system and, 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 and strengthen it and help it to be ready for the next day. So if you're not getting that, then as you get up and you go through the next day, you're just definitely going to be more susceptible to getting ill. Mm. Fourth column is supplements. Okay. There are uh, tremendous uh, supplements that will help to boost your immunity and give you that extra wall of protection. And uh, some of those uh, that I, my favorites, uh, vitamin C is right up there on that list. Uh, vitamin D, okay. uh, selenium, zinc, N-acetylcysteine. There's uh, an herb called echinacea, uh, oil of oregano, simple garlic and onions. These are all great things that are uh, wonderful to help cleanse the, the cells, to improve the immune system, to strengthen you, to be prepared for whatever it is you might meet wow. from day to day. So, you know, arming yourself with these things and, and following this type of a lifestyle yes. is going to make you 
very resilient, resistant. If you even get sick, you're going to get over it much, much quicker, much quicker. Hmm. Um, why do you, I mean, I don't want to get into a, you know, a whole, open up a whole can of worms, but why is there, again, as a lay person looking from the outside, mm -hmm. why does there seem to be a certain level of resistance, you think, from conventional medicine to some very, I mean, this is common sense, kinds of. It is. I mean, yeah. why do you, why do you think there's so much resistance to that? I mean, it makes perfect sense. You know, it's, it's been something I've talked about for a long time. Um, the mainstream media very rarely will talk about the kinds of things I've talked about here, which really is the true, you know, the truth about what good health is all about. How is that created? Right. Um, the thing is, is that we have a very unhealthy society. Right. You know, in Canada and the United States, we are psychologically and physiologically very unhealthy. And so when we are um, exposed to or, uh, you know, our cells become so toxic, um, we're going to get sick. And so we rely on medicines, antibiotics and other things to, to get us through. Um, the terrain approach that, that I promote is slow. And it's difficult for people. Right. So a lot of people just aren't there. Right. And so, in a way, you know, people have learned to depend right. on the conventional medical approach. But is it really the best way? It's more a band-aid than anything else. Right. And so the true way to health, the way that God wants us to live and to bless us with good health, really is based on building a strong immune system and enjoying a much greater quality of life. So it's, it, it boils down to choice, really it does. It, it, you know, what are we gonna do? Are we gonna choose to go this way or that way? Yeah. We, we've got maybe two and a half minutes. <laughs> I don't know if I wanna open this, but, but I mean, we've been talking you know, primarily, well, I think when we think of immune system, most folks think about protection against respiratory, you know, but yes. how about, is it possible that the immune system can actually help us with things like preventing cancers or other? you know, uh, yes. auto, uh, autoimmune disorders or more, some of these more serious kinds of diseases? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, this is an area that, again, is obscured. It's not uh, something that is really, um, uh, you're not going to hear very much about it. You really got to dig to find out about these things. Um, treatments that uh, come about as a result of natural uh, approaches there's a huge number of those. Hmm. And I feel that as uh, we are going along, my hope is, is that there's more freedom to express those and to use those things. Um, all of the things that I've mentioned would be part of a plan to build up an immune system for cancer. Right, okay. Um, we have many different things that we use. I have a lot of cancer patients that I deal with. Some of them refuse to take conventional cancer therapy. I am treating them totally naturally. Right. I even have dogs. I have a dog right now who I'm treating who's in the States. <laughs> I, I, hmm. It's just over the phone, but uh, we have incredible natural treatments that work really, really well. We have people calling us all over the world wow. for some of the things that we're doing and what we're using. So. I will leave it at that. I know our time is short. Yeah, it's sad. But I do want to give people hope. Yes. That there is hope. There are alternatives that are very viable, very effective. Well, again, these, these, <laughs> the time goes by so fast when you're talking. So thank you. Uh, we will have the link on the website for folks that Great. want to be in contact yeah. with you. Um, we're just going to end our program with a word of prayer like we always do. Gracious God, loving Heavenly Father, thank you so much again for the opportunity to learn more about how we can stay healthy, get healthy, about the different things that you have placed within this incredible world that you created that will help us live life and live it more abundantly. Father, I especially want to pray for those right now that are going through a, a, a difficult time with their health and are maybe on the verge of despair, that they may have confidence that there is a solution out there and trusting in you and reaching out to the proper resources 
can be of help to them in their lives. Bless each and every viewer, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we've come to the end of another Lessons for Living television program. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we truly appreciate uh, your faithfulness and watching each and every week. And let me ask you if you would be so kind as to share the program with your friends and with your family so that they too can tune in. I also want to thank our special guest, Dr. David Sloan. And uh, remind us again of your website, please. Yes, yeah, so you can uh, find us at Sloan naturalhealthcenter.com slownaturalhealthcenter.com uh, If you go on the l4ltv.com on our website under the previous programs tab this program will be there and right underneath it will be a button that you can click and will connect you with Dr. Sloan's uh, Natural Health Center and you can reach out to Dr. Sloan for more information and to purchase his book Transform Your Health Transform Your Life I uh, also want to remind you that while on the website, why not check out that page that says Donate Today, where you can send a donation. We are a charitable organization. Every dollar gets invested right back into this ministry, and we will send you a receipt for income tax purposes. Hey, follow me on Instagram, subscribe to our YouTube channel, like our Facebook page. This program will be available on audio on SoundCloud in about half an hour. Thank you so much for watching. We hope to do this again next time. God bless you. We'll see you back here then.